Hey guys and welcome back to the Jato channel. I am so sorry, yeah. Man hasn't been available in what two weeks now. Obviously, last video I made was the player rings video on Southampton. Um I decided to take a break plus other things as well that's happened. To be honest, when it's international break, I'm sort of just I'm I'm drained in a way. In I, I, I don't know why, but I just I'm like I just live, breathe football, and I'm not a fan of the international break. I am sorry. I just want to see my Chelsea back, do you understand? And make videos consistently when I see them play. And um, yeah, that's why I haven't really been uh, making content for two weeks. I could have, you know, the Newcastle takeover and stuff like that. That was pretty huge. Um, we face them soon, to be fair. So I might delve deeper into that when we are closer to facing Newcastle. So um, yeah, but tomorrow's game. To preview to Brentford Chelsea, um, and it's a big game. Obviously, we've got Brentford, um, seventh in the Premier League right now. Um, they've only lost one game, and that was a 90th minute winner, um, for Leon Trossard, uh, Brighton. Um, yep, they went to Brighton, and I mean they went to Brentford, and they won one nil. It was a very tight game to be fair, and they won it in the last minute. So Brentford have shown they're going to be a hard tie to beat this season. Obviously, they defeated the likes of Arsenal two 0 at the opening day of the season. They obviously held Liverpool to a three three draw. What a game that was! I especially um, I watched the. I think I watched mainly the second half. What a half that was! Brilliant game of football, and um, Brentford are showing. Look, they're playing good football despite playing a three five two, which. People may see it as a negative formation, but I don't see people complaining about how they play with, you know, potentially how many defenders? Eight defenders, seven defenders, including the goalkeeper. I'm not going to complain about that because, like, what? There's no need to. This myth that you don't play good football with a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3, you know, it's all defensive and stuff. It's just bullshit. And the likes of us and Brentford are showing that. To understand so that's why I respect Brentford you know defensively they have been solid they've only conceded six goals that is the same amount as Liverpool and less than Manchester United so Brentford at the moment they've got threats all over the pitch um obviously we look at their main guys up top is in Bamboo and mainly Ivan Tony that guy is going to be the beast of the east you know um you know, he brings his assists into the game recently in the Premier League. He's been the one dropping deeper, laying it off for players and stuff like that. But he can also score goals as well. Showed it last season in the Championship, 31 goals. And they've got a good manager in Thomas Frank. Um, you know, so far he's been doing well. But in terms of Chelsea, look, we've got injuries at the moment. Um, Ziyech is out. Tuchel pretty much said he's going to be out. He missed the last two training sessions, the last two days, due to a headache. To be honest, I don't know how long... I don't think a headache should be that long. I mean, I've never had a headache for more than two days in it. Or even two days. It's probably been like a day at best. I sleep over it, and then the next day I'm fine. Like, I don't know about you lot, but that's just me in it. So, hey. Ziek has a headache, so he's going to be out. Not enough paracetamol Stamford Bridge. Not enough at Cobham. <laughs> I don't know, innit? But uh, it is what it is. Pulisic is still out, and look, on Pulisic, yeah, this guy, I, I can't believe it, like, I was expecting him to be back this week in training, didn't see any photos of him, so it's clear that he's still out, crazy how Tuku said he was going to be 10 days, it ended up being 36 days, he's been injured for 36 days, he's already missed 10 out of 12 games, and that, and you know what, to be fair, that's not all due to, down to injury, um, it's actually sometimes, well, not sometimes, um, one of them was due to COVID, obviously. Can you believe that he hasn't been in a match day squad for Chelsea in 62 days? He hasn't appeared for Chelsea since the opening game of the season in which he scored. That's unbelievable. Because right after that game, he obviously caught COVID and missed the likes of the Arsenal games and the Liverpool games. He missed those games. And then obviously for the USA, he got injured. Um, he went off. He went off the field, and he came back on thinking he could run it off. He made the injury worse, and then he came back off. I ended up watching that game against Honduras, um, and then ever since he's just been out and he's just been recovering. And it looks like once again he's not going to be available. To be honest, we don't know how bad the injury is. People don't even know what the injury is. I think it's his ankle. It's got to be some sort of an ankle injury, something around there, because it's because I did see um, somebody talk about that back when he, you know, was at first injured and how long it was going to take for him to recover. People were talking about, you know, um, I saw this Insta post where they talked about um, it would be surprised if 
they'd be if he'd recover in 10 days they expect him to be out for potentially two to six weeks or something like that i saw that post and i was like oh here we go and look how long has it been like yeah, literally been around four to six weeks so far, I think. Um, so, yeah, do your maths, day six days ago. Yeah, whatever. Um, obviously, Rudiger's still out. He had back problems due to why he didn't play against Jer uh, against um, North Macedonia in their 4-0 win. And Thiago Silva is out just due to the fact that um, he just can't play two games in two days. Um, he played late night on the Friday, um, 14th of October uh, for Brazil. Obviously, that's just annoying. And Tugu talked about how it's just frustrating how... You know, um, he's got to play that late. Even though he knew about it, of course, he can't complain now because, you know, it is what it is. It just happens. And they've tried to have meetings about it and it looks like they're not really going anywhere because the same outcome just happens every time. You know, especially for the Con not the CONCACAF, um, them lot in South America for the Uruguays, the Brazils, the Argentinas, all of them lot. So... Yeah, it is what it is. We've got a few players out. Um, Brentford looking strong. And um, yeah, let's get into the lineup prediction. Um, in goal, Edouard Mendy. Um, you know, um, played all the Premier League games so far. Had a good international break with Senegal. Um, I swear they haven't lost a game yet in their World Cup qualifying. Seen as Rudiger's out, um, you know. And by the way, it just shows with Rudiger as well. Like, he's the only player in the team, if I'm not wrong, to have played every single Premier League game. Showing that he is literally one of the first names on the team sheet. Like, him, Mason Mount, probably, um, Edouard Mendy and Lukaku are probably, like, the first four names on that team sheet. And probably Kante if he's fit, so... Um, yeah, that's that just shows we're going to miss him tomorrow. And I tweeted this out. I don't think we're going to keep a clean sheet um, with both him and Silver out tomorrow. doesn't show that, you know, this is not me saying that I don't trust my other centre-backs. It's just I think those two, Silver and Rudiger, are our two best centre-backs and most important. That's all, my opinion. Um, the back three, though, um, Trevor Chalaba as the left centre-back. Um... Andreas Christensen as the middle centre-back and Aspi Lequeur as the right centre-back. I'm not going to lie to you lot, yeah? I am not trying to play uh, Malang Saw tomorrow. Um, no way. That guy would get torn apart and likely be sent off or something like that. That's how rash I think the brother is. Can't lie to you. So, to be honest with you lot, don't want to see him tomorrow. Right wing back, I've got to play Reese James. As much as I probably wouldn't want to just due to... The fact that he just came back from an injury. One, I'm not trying to see Callum Antonio there. And two, if I put Aspili at right wing back and not play Reese James, that means I'd have to play Malang Saar as a um, left-sided centre-back. Or, you know, out the blue, maybe a, a Marcus Alonso or Ben Chilwell somehow playing there, which would be out the, like, no way. No questions, no way that wouldn't happen. So, yeah, um, for me, I just throw Reese James back in there, right wing back. I played Ben Chilwell, left wing back. Him and Alonso did have good international breaks. Alonso played well for Spain um, in the games against France and Italy. And obviously Ben Chilwell um, had a good international break. Obviously scored his first England goal recently against, who was it? Andorra, was it? I think it was Andorra. So congratulations to both of them. They played really well. And uh, fair play, that left wing back spot is going to be interesting for competition next season. Now, the midfield. This one's a bit difficult. Um, I wouldn't play Jorginho tomorrow. The guy needs a rest. The guy's played a lot of football, um, and it's due. And you just saw it in that game against Spain. The guy was getting run ragged. And he's been getting slander recently about the Ballon d'Or thing. And look, I'm not even gonna speak on that yet. If he wins it, yeah, I'm gonna be so shameless. I don't think he will. And I, and to be honest, I don't even think he should win it. That's just my opinion, isn't it? I think the winner should be Lewandowski, but that's just my opinion. Um, but I wouldn't play him tomorrow. He's not. He's a bit tired, I think. Um, I think the guy just needs a rest. Um, that's just my opinion. Give him a week's rest. Give him the week off at least. And um, yeah, let him come back from Malmo. Um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I'd start him. Um, only player out the three to have been training consistently. Obviously, Kante just came back from COVID, so he could possibly play tomorrow. But I'd definitely play Ruben, continue his form and his uh, recent good performances, obviously, from Southampton. Aston Villa, for me, deserves a chance. And next to him... I would stick Kovacic in there. I would play Kovacic. Kante, I'd like to bring him on during the game. Um, you know, obviously recently just came back from COVID. And look, I would have said the same thing with Rhys James with the injury if we had options available. But because Rudy and Silva are out, I have to put Rhys James in at right wing back. 
you know, because if I put Aspi there, like I said, Malang Sol would have to play left centre back. And are you trying to see that? Mm, I don't think I am, to be honest with you. So, yeah, um, we've got options in midfield anyway. So, Kovacic and Ruben, I thought that partnership was good against Southampton. Um, I expect nonetheless the same against Brentford. It'll be a different game tactically, of course, but, you know, wouldn't surprise me if Tuku did play Kante for the energy and, you know, to try to dominate that midfield because they will play three in midfield tomorrow. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he played. But I'd play Ruben and Kovacic. The front three now. Um, left side, um, I'd definitely play Hudson Odoi. The guy needs to continue. I want him to build momentum in that position. Seeing as Ziek and Pulisic are both out, and Kai Havertz recently has been in good form for us, it's a big opportunity for me for Hudson Odoi to stake his claim in that Chelsea team and try to play consistently. Yeah, he played well against Southampton. He was robbed of an assist. It's an opportunity again to play against Brentford and show why he should be in contention to at least begin maybe substitute appearances or getting starts in that position on a regular basis. And Mason Mount, I play him on the other side. Um, yes, the guys had a slow start to the season. Yes, he had a poor international break. I get it. I understand. He's been getting slandered recently. I don't get it, to be honest with you, with the slandering. He is an important player for us. You know, he's one of our most consistent players. So I kind of don't understand where all this criticism of him is coming from. Okay, just give the guy a break. Do you understand? Like, Jesus. Okay, <laughs> like people forget he's a young guy, you know. And it's not like he's been in the Premier League for ages now. It's only his third season in the Premier League, you know. Not long ago, man was in the championship with Derby and that. Not long ago, man was with Vitesse and that. So chill out on Mason Mount, okay. The fact that he's even shown... The consistency shown over the last two years, yeah, unbelievable. Just forgive him for, you know, one little bad spell, okay? He's had a bad start to the season, but, you know, against Southampton when he came on, he had a good cameo. Are we going to admit that he didn't? You know, man, are going to act like he's bad overnight. Get out of here, man. Mason Mount plays tomorrow. I, look, I understand the Timo Werner thing, but I'd probably bring him on, um, you know, just in case, because maybe Brentford, you know, if we're winning the game... You know, we might want to go on counter-attacks and stuff like that. And Timo's a brilliant player to come on and do that for us, in my opinion. So, yeah. And up top, I'll play Lukaku. There was obviously a bit of a concern whether he was going to be fit. But it looks like he is fit. It looks like he will play. Um, and, yeah, I'm happy with that. So, that is my lineup, people. Mendy, uh, Trevor Chaloba, Christensen, Aspilicueta, Reese James, uh, ben Chilwell, Kovacic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek and a front three of Hudson, Ndoye, Mesa, Mount and Lukaku. Tomorrow the key is getting behind that midfield. Um, go win that midfield battle. Um, Mount, Mount and Hudson, Ndoye are going to be very key in maybe dropping deep, driving with the ball and creating space for Romelu Lukaku to go and finish his dinner off. Um, for me, that's the only way we will win that midfield battle tomorrow. Kovacic and Ruben are press resistant and they will do everything they can. But I think Mason, Mount and Hudson, Ndoye will be very key into doing their roles in, you know, finding the pocket in between the those three guys and the three centre-backs and maybe, you know, give it out wide and create spaces for others and start creating chances and stuff like that. I think that's going to be the key tomorrow with those two guys, with Ruben and then Hudson Odoi and Mason Mount above them. So, um, yeah, that's just my opinion. Um, and uh, we should, should win tomorrow, despite the injuries, despite how good Brentford have been this season. It's still Brentford. And that's not even me trying to be disrespectful, yeah? But they just came up the league, okay? First time in the Premier League in over 70 years. We should win tomorrow despite the injuries. Let's not act like even if Ziyech and Pulisic were fit, like the both of them were going to play anyway. Let's be serious. But it would have been nice to see them on the bench at least. Not going to lie in terms of that. Yes, I hear that. But they weren't going to play really, were they? Maybe they would have came on, but oh well. We have a strong squad and that that's what this requires. When injuries happen, you know, you have to have the squad to able to still be able to compete and still be able to win football matches. We've got four players out, four key players out, but hey, we've still got, you see with my lineup, that's still a very strong team at the end of the day. And um, I'm going with a 2-1 Chelsea win. I did tweet out that I don't think we will keep a clean sheet with both Rudiger and Silva out for various reasons, just due to how important Rudiger is, how Thiago Silva is naturally probably our best centre-back, in my opinion. And look, it's not me showing, you know, um, Trevor Chalaba, you know, I don't trust him. Maybe he might make a mistake tomorrow and it could be just due to his inexperience in certain situations. He has never played left centre-back for us yet. 
but we'll see how he does tomorrow. I do trust him. If you did enjoy this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your um, predictions down below. Tell me your lineup uh, predictions as well. And um, yeah, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow when I do my review on my player rings video. See you guys then. Peace.